Hello and welcome. Today on Express Drive, we have a very special guest who has been waving the Indian flag on quite a few podiums around the world. Part of the Red Bull Driver program, second runner-up in the Asian F3 on his way to finish his second season in Formula 2. We have none other than Jehan Daruwa. Hi Jehan, welcome to the show. Uh, we have very little time with you, of course, you're a busy man, so you're going to get straight to it. Uh, Monaco, how was Monaco? I mean, like driving there for the first time, of course. Uh, how did you approach that weekend and what was your mindset? Was it different? How did you approach it differently like this time? Actually, I'd been to Monaco, I think, 2016 in a Formula Renault car. So, obviously, I'd not been there for five years. but. Uh, Driving a Formula 2 car, it almost felt like I'd never been there before, just with the speeds and the, the differences and stuff. So, honestly, it was a surreal experience. Just uh, even though the resu results didn't go the way I wanted them to go, just driving around a street track like that, uh, you know, within a few centimeters of the walls, with that speed, the amount of focus required for a race like that, it was honestly one of the best uh, inexperiences in terms of. A racing driver can have so, like I said, apart from the results, I really enjoyed myself. And uh, you know, uh, driving a Formula Two car on Monaco, you can't really ask for anything better. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed. It was your mindset? Like, how did you approach that weekend as well? Like going into it, uh, like what was different from your regular other race track weekends? You know, unfortunately, in Formula Two, uh, we don't really have too much practice. We have a, a forty-minute session, and we go straight into qualifying. So. Uh, there's only one mindset, which is to get on it as fast as you can. Uh, also, because you don't have a lot of push laps, you probably have five or six laps in practice. So, uh, you know, the mindset has to be to just get up to speed as quickly as you can. Almost treat it as a as a normal track. Uh, if you do end up crashing, uh, you know, it's almost so be it. Because in Formula One, you have three practice sessions to almost build up to qualify. Uh, so you don't really want to crash because you have the time. But in, in Formula Two, if you, if you kind of start off too slow, you just never get there. So uh, you know the goal is to to go out there, find, be comfortable, and then uh, you know just uh, push more than you really think uh, you can push and get close to the walls, and uh, you know just go from there early. All right. So you ended 2020 on a high with the podium and the win at Bahrain, of course, and then again, you had another podium in the beginning of the season in Bahrain again. Yeah. So what is it about Bahrain and the socket and the track and socket and uh, that's been that uh, really good for you and how is the performance? Is it because of the track or is it just that like it's your favourite track or how does that happen? Like, I think it's a combination of, uh, you know, me suiting really well to the track. Also, the team has been very successful there in the past few years and uh, you know, especially for this year, there's not been in the last three weekends, there's been like zero tire degradation or oh, relatively for Formula 2. So, say the advantage of being in your second year is a bit less. While uh, in Bahrain, we had quite a lot of degradation on the tires. So, uh, you know, having the experience, being there for a second year, all that sort of stuff uh, has helped. While uh, at tracks like Silverstone and stuff, we had a lot of degradation last year, but with a different compound this year. There was no degradation, and it showed in the in you know in the racing. There was pretty much zero overtaking in in, in the top ten, and uh, I think that's where it played more into my hands. Also in in Bahrain, I'm I'm normally very good at uh, you know feeling the tires and conserving them, and you know getting the maximum out of them over the endurance of the race. And unfortunately, when qualifying didn't go as well as I wanted in in, in Silverstone, it, it was just hard to achieve those results. You know, if there was more degradation and stuff, uh, I was pretty confident that I, I would be able to move ahead and through the field. All right, and but 2021 has been more difficult here compared to your 20 at the end. How you had a high in 2020? Yeah. Um, can you talk about how this season has been for you uh, personally, and uh, how has the three race weekend change the format and the the change in format impacted your approach and your performance this year? You know, obviously it's. Uh, a different format. I'm not sure if it is uh, the best for us because we don't get enough, uh, say, driving as you would want to. Eight races is really not a lot, you know, in in 12 months. Uh, so it's different, uh, but you know, it's the same for everyone. So you just need to kind of adapt to it. It's not uh, gone, say, like you said, to plan. Uh, 
think the only thing I can do is now try to bounce back as well as I can and score maximum points in the next four weekends. And uh, you know anything is possible in Formula Two if uh, you know the leaders have one or two bad qualifyings and you have one good weekend, you're you're straight back into the fight. So uh, you know from my point of view with this format. If you do qualify well, you can score a lot of points. If you qualify outside the top ten, you can pretty much score no points. So uh, it is difficult, but it's again uh, the same for everyone. So you just have to like maximize it. And uh, you know, I don't think it's uh, like I said. The main thing is the track time is not great, and I think the previous format was a bit more suited to me in terms of being on track more often and uh, you know just being in a racing car. All right. So uh, there are four rounds remaining in the rest of the season: Monza, Sochi. Then we have the inaugural race in Saudi Arabia, which is also another street track, and of course the final round in uh, the Emirates. Yeah. What, which one are you most looking forward to, and what do you think that you can capitalize more moving, uh, like from the rest of the season? Honestly, I'm just looking forward to Monza because after the weekend I've had at Silverstone, I just want to get back out there and and have a good. A good weekend. Uh, I think it's difficult going into like a break with a weekend that didn't go to plan. Uh, obviously, you can't uh, say put your mind to it too much. I think the main thing is that again in race three in Silverstone, I I had uh, a lot of pace, couldn't really use it, and uh, I'm pretty confident in Monza. You know, we should be quick and uh, the racing should be good. You know, even if you qualify six, seven, we should be able to move through, and uh, you know, you could win from anywhere. There, so. I'm pretty looking forward to getting back uh, on track. All right. So, uh, what can you do in the next few races, and what are your chances from 2022? Like, do you see yourself another year in Formula Two? Do you see Red Bull keen to bring you up forward into maybe into Formula One or to another category where it where it suits you better? Where you think so? Where do you see yourself racing next year? I mean, it's very difficult to to pinpoint on where I will be. You know, even if uh, the season, the end of the season does go to plan of how I would want it to go. Uh, you know, to move into F1, you need seats to open up, and uh, for me, currently, there's only Alfa Tauri, which is uh, a realistic opportunity for F1. And uh, well, with things how they're going, I don't really see uh, a possibility for maybe a seat opening up. I don't really know, but. You know, for us, like we are three Red Bull Juniors in Formula Two. Our main uh, goal is uh, to do as well as we can to impress. So, you know, we there is the pressure for them to promote us to F1, and uh, that's the most we can do. Uh, apart from that, it's all out of our control. Obviously, if you do well this year, it's not the end of the world. If you don't get a seat into F1 next year, you you put yourself out there, and you can always uh, you know go the year after. So, you know, the main thing for me is to impress in the next four rounds and. Uh, Apart from that, I don't really know uh, what my future holds. All right, you've been nominated for the Arjuna Award, of course. Uh, like you're the second motorsport um, person from the fraternity to be nominated yeah. after God of Gill, of course. How does that feel? Honestly, it feels uh, amazing. Uh, you know, it's probably even though I've not won it, it's like a, a massive achievement uh, for me in itself just to be nominated. Uh, I. I didn't have vast uh, knowledge, but you know, I feel uh, my parents and stuff have told me how big it really is. So uh, you know, uh, I feel super proud and super uh, you know honored to have been even nominated for the award. So like, I've not even won it, but I it's just still one of the biggest achievements in my career uh, so far. Of course. So one final question: Hamilton or Verstappen? I know you're a Red Bull driver, but what are your prospects for the Formula One season? And yeah, you know, all I can say is uh, I think it's going to be close. They are both super, super talented guys. Probably the best ever in in probably equal cars now. Uh, so I think it's going to go down, uh, you know, to the wire. But uh, obviously, Hamilton has done it eight times before. Max has never done it, but uh, Max is probably the best driver also ever to have raced in F1. So. Yeah, I can't really call it, but if I had to call anyone, it would probably be Max. All right. And which uh, championship position would you be happy with with your performance this year, if you have to like call it today for the for the you know, championship for yourself? Yeah, obviously I need to be quite realistic. Uh, always you want to win, but uh, you know, uh, 
a top 5 would be will be okay and a top 3 would be great from this position i'm in right now so i think i just need to be realistic focus on each race try to maximize the uh, the points and you know hopefully from there i do end up where i want to all right thank you so much for your time jehan best of luck for the rest of the season and for the award as well take care thank you thank you thank you so much for watching and hit that like button if you like this video subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down below about what you think if you want to watch jehan in action racing in formula 2 tune in to eurosports as they will be broadcasting the entire season this year i'll see you in the next one